both of our children um, went to Horn in Northwest and now West High. So a lot of those first pieces came from that school and local kind of neighborhood community. Um, I was on the PTO and Lucy and I ran a, an organization at Horn to try to create community. So a lot of those same folks who were participating in those groups with us were our first donors. <laughs> So we just expanded pretty quickly to trying to collect other items and we filled up the storage unit. It got to be like if you needed a mattress, you had to empty out the whole storage unit and grab the mattress and put it all back. Um, so we also, Celine actually at the very beginning said, I know there's a lot of stuff out there that goes to the landfill and we really also quickly found there's so much that um, just with turnover and with people remodeling, just tons of furniture goes to the land. <laughs> and so we're trying to collect most of that and, uh, and reuse it. So. <coughs>
started counting down, and I thought he was counting down from Christmas morning. He was counting backward, and he was counting down to the delivery day. Um, so that was one of our really moving first early moments was that this, this day of receiving a bed and furniture was something that was more exciting to him than Christmas. Um, and we have lots of stories like that where it's just a, something that makes us really feel good because we are not just providing the, the furniture and the things, but um, we're bringing items that are so nice and wonderful. And a lot of times the folks that we're serving think that they're going to be receiving things that belong in the landfill, and that's not anything that we do, and they, they feel really good, like they deserve nice things, and they do. Um, so that's really important to us. individuals and families in the Iowa City area. And that is um, the recipients. Um, so it's basically the Iowa City School District. So Iowa City, Coralville, North Liberty, Hills, and Tiffin. Tiffin? No, district. Anyway, we're, we hope to expand further, but that's where we can cover right now. Um, but that also means we are serving donors. Those are individuals and families, and uh, it's it's how we do this is because of our donors, and um, so we do pickups, which we'll also talk about in a minute. Um, and then we also are serving the referral agencies. So there are a lot of social service agencies that help people with services and helping them into housing. But but once people get into housing, it's often the end of that service. And so they're in an apartment or a house with nothing or with maybe an air bed or a card table and a couple chairs. Um, so we, we also are, um, we started, like I said, meeting with some social workers who said, sure, you can take this off our plate. And, uh, so good. and then we're all fellow community members, so we're all serving. So uh, as Selena mentioned, we, and I also, Kind of said, we, we take referrals and we do that because we were two volunteers who just decided we needed to try to fill this gap. Uh, we don't have social work experience and we don't work directly with clients. And so we decided that the best way to do this is for one of the referral agencies, one of these social service agencies. Uh, also we have clinics at the VA and UIHC and um, of the school district is, is not a social service agency. Um, they find out that somebody's in need and they let us know. And that's the requirement we have. It's just that somebody has determined you have a need and we will fill it. Uh, so that's a partial list. Here are some more, um, but like Selena said, we have about 35 agencies that make referrals to us. done a um, speaking thing in a long time. So the way that our process works is we get a referral from the social service agencies and that has contact information and some their understanding of what a household needs. Then we get in touch with the recipients and like Selena said, we schedule a visit. Um, so we, the two of us or um, one of us with another person goes into the home and we meet the household and whoever else is home um, and we see we have learned that we really need to know the space they have the doorways the stairs how many stairs you have to find before we choose the furniture and then like Selena also said we get a better idea of what they need a lot of times people haven't thought about that we have towels and bath mats and shower curtains and dishes and pots and pans and, and they don't know what to ask for so it, it's it makes it just makes it better if we can go get a full list and then bring everything so i can add to that, yes. to that. Um, so today i spent a great part of the day um, completing these visits with folks who will deliver to on sunday and one of the referrals that we received through johnson county social services was for a man who's moved here um, into iowa city with his daughter he found out that he has really terrible stomach cancer so he's being treated for stomach cancer and he does not have a bed um, he's being referred for assisted living, but that takes two months in his um, income bracket. 
So the referral was for a bed for dad. Um, when I went to the apartment today, his daughter also does, she has beds for her children and that's it. So I was able to see that her living room was empty, dining room was empty, um, they need all of these other things. So um, especially during the pandemic, we couldn't do these visits as much. It was really tough because we would arrive to deliver and see that we didn't really have a whole, whole picture. So um, today was a really good example and reminder of how important these visits are. So once we've done the visit, we go back to the warehouse, and it, for a long time it was just the two of us, but we do have, we're growing in how many volunteers we have, and then also we have some part-time staff now. So we go back and choose the furniture and um, pack all the smaller items, lamps and fans and all the kitchen stuff, all the linens. Um, we have games and books and things yes. for the children too. We like to bring the necessities and then also some things that make it really feel like home, artwork, um, little pieces of decor. Um, we try to find out, or we don't try to find, we find out what the, the likes and the dislikes of the family's favorite colors, print you can't stand. Um, we have a lot of folks ask us if we have people come into our warehouse and shop. We do not do that. And the biggest reason is that it often someone's favorite sofa is one that won't fit through their front door. Or it's a gigantic sofa and we use volunteer movers. So taking volunteers up a rickety staircase with the heaviest sofa or dining table that we have doesn't work. Um, so we find really good, a good feel for their taste and then we make the decisions and, and really spend a lot of time making sure that everything looks nice together and that it's something that will be pleasing. Um, we want our neighbors and friends to have comfortable homes, but they, we also want them to be joyful too. So then on, volunteer, on uh, delivery days, which are usually Sundays because that's our best volunteer opportunity um, for students and adults, um, we just have a, a group of volunteers come, and when it's not the worst of COVID, we have 20 to 30 and sometimes 40 volunteers at a time. And the more volunteers we have, the more we can, more households we can serve. So on an average volunteer day, we do about 8 to 10 households. We can get to like 12 to 16 if we have a really big group and run to the truck. So we, our volunteers load up by household, and then we take it there, all the volunteers go, and unload into the home. And then the unloading, it depends if, if some people just want you to put in the living room and they will take care of it. Sometimes it, they need more help getting mattresses upstairs or putting the rug out or whatever. Um, so that's, that's the process. Um, our, Inventory, we do pickups for free with a suggested donation, and we take drop-offs. Um, let's see, on our website, hopefully it's not too hard. I she had trouble with us in January. Um, at the top of our website, there's a button for requesting pickup, and there's a button for letting us know you're going to drop off, and then there's a form, and then. Um, we ask for pictures to be sent. Um, there's also on our website a list of all the items we take and don't take. And those are both kind of long. We take a lot of items, but there are also a lot of things that we have realized we can't use. Um, but on that note, we do also have some partners we work with who when we can't take something, we have some um, places that will take them and we can either direct you to them or we can sometimes them up or something like that. Um, oh, and then just the only things that we take that we insist are new are bed pillows and shower curtain liners. Baking pans are all baking sheets are also nice to be new, but um, but the, the shower curtain liners and pillows are two things that just are kind of icky to give if they're not new. I'll just add on um, our donations. About 90% of our large donations are through pickups. Um, mattresses, sofas, large dining tables, most of those we go out and pick up. And um, through Oaknall, yeah, here, did you? Did you? Okay, yes, and then also here, uh, we, we've done, we've completed dozens of pickups from folks who have moved and moved in here to Oaknall East. Um, so if you are one of them, or you know anyone who has, we appreciate it so much. Um, when we can come and pick up the majority of the household's items that are wonderful, and we furnished probably hundreds of family from families from Oakville community.
donations, which is something that makes me really happy about and makes me appreciate your community so much. So one question we often get is about bed bugs. Um, we have a dog who comes through twice a month and um, inspects for bed bugs and mold. And um, she can she can do like six feet deep or nine feet deep and 12 feet high. So she inspects everything we have and that way we know that we are not taking anything into a home that they don't want, that um, Selena knows lots more about bed bugs. But, she is amazing, and uh, and we just it's really important to us that we are not causing any problems. One quick question: Do you, does the dog have to be trained for that? Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah, she's she's very very highly trained, and her um, handlers had to go to Florida and spend intensive time training with her, and she's trained the same way that a dog, a dog who's trained to detect bombs or. Products. They go through that same training process and they test her regularly. They all um, walk her through a facility and purposely have a mattress that has some bed bug residue or something mildewy and, and test her to make sure that she's she's doing her job well. And she's she's amazing. Um, she's a very sweet dog and we, we, she makes us feel really comfortable and safe when we're, we're delivering donations, especially for shared living units where ventilation systems um, connect apartments and things, uh, bed bugs in our warehouse or in a bed, 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 big, large apartment complex could completely ruin us um, an entire communities, um, all of their things. So it's, it, it helps us too. So we, um, we've done some sort of follow-up surveys with um, recipients and we have a few quotes that are here. Um, that really meant a lot to us. And this one says, what I do enjoy the most is my kitchen table. It's my favorite because it gives us a moment where we can sit down and eat as a family, talk over things that happened in the day, see what we did, how it worked. It gives me relaxation at the kitchen table. It's where everyone comes to meet up and now we have something to sit on, which makes it more comfortable. We just have a few before and afters also spaced through here, and, and you can just see that they were living without a table and chairs. And, uh, and then you can also see the beautiful table and chairs that was donated. So I mentioned a little bit about the landfill. Um, we, uh, we estimate that in 2020, we diverted about 35 tons of things oh. from the landfill, and that's probably conservative. Um, and, and I mean, this year, we've, we've taken in more donations still. At Selena did almost all the pickups last year and did 350 um, with just one other person. So um, it's just, you know, a lot of stuff. And then there's a place for it to go. Um, mattresses and box springs are something especially the landfill doesn't like because they don't compact and they can get caught in the machinery, which is dangerous for the workers. Textiles, I think, are a huge part of the, the waste that goes there. So, and we take sheets, blankets, mattress pads, towels, bath mats. Another kind of quirky thing about Iowa is there's a law that um, used mattresses can't be resold in consignment or online. Um, even if you order a mattress and lie down on it for 10 minutes and decide that you don't like it anymore, it's illegal to sell it. So the landfill was seeing tons of mat tons upon tons of mattresses coming in, especially with uh, the amount of mattress and box companies that have popped up where if you order your mattress and you don't love it, you can just throw it away and get a full refund. Um, so it's, it's really nice to be able to, to offset some of those mattresses and that were going to the, the landfill. It was a major issue for them. Just so another little uh, part of it, our impact is that we, we try to do, we have a very small team and um, a relatively small budget and we try to do as much as we can as quickly as we can and as efficiently as we can. So, so some parts of our warehouse, if, and you're all invited to come visit if you want, we have beds in a bag, so we put a sheet set and pillowcases and blanket in a bag ready to go so that when we know there's a seven-year-old boy, we can grab something that looks appropriate and take it and we have 
towel bundles, dish sets. Um, so, so we're constantly trying to make ways to, to make everything we do faster and serve more people more quickly. Well, Selena mentioned that we are able now to take pieces that otherwise we wouldn't have used. And one, I think she also mentioned that we don't want to deliver and we don't deliver anything that we wouldn't put in our own home. So that doesn't mean it's perfect, but it means that it's good enough for us. So it should, you know, that's what we want to give. So sometimes we get items that aren't just aren't quite what we would want to take home, but we. Um, have volunteers who have done amazing mm -hmm. um, refurbishing, um, reuse. We had a, uh, like a china cabinet, I think, so the, the we took the top off, and then there was a big hole in, in the um, top of the bottom part. And we had a volunteer who took a table leaf home and cut it to fit and put it on top, and it turned it into a dresser. That's one of our favorite parts, yes. And we hope, hope to keep expanding this. Um, the more efficient we can get and use our space well. So um, I think that's enough about that, right? Do you want to read for it? Sure, yes, yeah. Okay, this one. Um, so this is another quote we have as feedback from a recipient. It really made me feel like, yes, I'm at home now because spending time in an empty apartment Technically, it's mine. I'm paying rent here, but I feel like it's not my place yet. Like once you get your furniture in and you get to further decorating and you add pieces, it starts to really feel like a home. Um, we've had some of the people we've delivered to let us know that before they have furniture in their homes, that they actually prefer to go back to shelter and stay there because a completely empty house or apartment does not feel comforting or safe. Um, it just feels strange and empty. And in shelter, you at least have a bed and some things around you. Uh, so that was something that really has set with me over the years, too, as we've done this. A um, hugely important part of the work that we do is our, our wonderful volunteers. Um, we have, again, a tiny staff. We just had one staff person until a couple of, not even two months ago. Yeah, yeah and then we're able to, to hire on a little bit of part-time help. Um, so we've had thousands of hours donated by hundreds of community members. Um, high school students have been incredible. We've had high school students give up their Friday nights and their football banquets and their weekends to come do uh, the, the really hard work, like moving our warehouses, um, which it feels very thankless in the moment. Um, and then also the rewarding work where you get to go on delivery day and have fun and, and see the impact. Um, beyond that, we've had lots of businesses give their time, um, but just tons of community members from all walks of life who want to be a part of this. And they really love that they're engaging with mm -hmm. others that they wouldn't organically do. Um, and that's something that's really been important to us too. I, one of my best friends is 79 years old and I'm 38. I never imagined that at this stage of my life I would make best friends with somebody who's almost twice my age. It's just kind of a weird thing that happened. Um, and then all of our high school students are really close with too. But so the relationships and the community engagement that occurs because of the volunteer work is um, really one of our favorite, or my favorite part of the thing. I know Lucy too, um, that makes the work that we do um, so wonderful. It, it strengthens our community and our volunteers report, and our, our volunteers and our recipients both report feeling like they're more connected to their community after doing volunteer work with us. And I'll just end that up with we couldn't do it without our volunteers. They're critical. <laughs>
So as um, we've mentioned, we had Selena, we hired Selena as our managing director in February 2020. And then we were able to hire the equivalent of two more full-time staff this summer. So we have um, five very part-time people. Um, some are helping with volunteers because like Selena said, that's how we do this. Um, two of them are helping us with the pickups and they are amazing. Um, but our, our biggest goal right now is sustainability. Um, like I told you, when we started, we thought we'd be picking up a few beds and delivering them to a few kids or families, and it's become very clear that there's so much more need than that. And um, we believe, or it's true, that this community needs a, uh, an organization whose mission is just to provide beds and furniture to our community members. And so we're really working on, on building our sustainability, just making sure that even if Selena and I decide we need to take a break or something, that, um, that this can keep going. Um, we, last summer, we were able to buy a box truck, which was <coughs> extremely exciting. Um, but we found that we could even, we could use two. We often use a U-Haul and our truck so that we can get those 10 to 15 house, houses delivered to. And same for pickups. Sometimes we have a, a household of furniture donated and then it needs to go right back to the warehouse emptied and go out to another pickup. So. Um, and then uh, our goal always is to be able to grow, to meet the need. And um, right, right now we're experiencing a huge jump in need. And COVID kind of kept things at a, a slow and steady pace and with school starting, I mean, we've had probably three new referrals a day since Friday when we got out. Yeah. So those are our goals. So as you probably can guess, the ways you can help are to donate items, donate time, or donate money. So, um, you know, we always need uh, beds, furniture, all those other things we mentioned. Um, we are always looking for volunteers, and we have volunteers of all ages. Not everybody can load the truck, but we have a lot of jobs that need to be done in the warehouse. We even have things like you could take laundry home and do it and bring it back. Um, and then another another big one, especially for a community like this, is just spreading the word. Um, when people know that their friend is moving in or a neighbor is moving in, letting them know that we exist in the community and we are one place that your dishes can go, your couch can go, um, that's hugely, hugely beneficial to us. Word of mouth, um, we're pretty young, even though we're three and a half years old now, um, so there's still a lot of people who don't know about us at all. Um, so letting, letting folks know that we're here, we have pickups, um, your donations are going right back into our community, it's, it's really critical for us. And I was just going to mention on the, the money part that part of the sustainability is, is the um, we love monthly donors or regular donors. Um, just even $10 a month helps us know that we're going to be able to keep going. Um, and I was also going to say we've had some young children help too and uh, we don't let young children come in the warehouse to do those jobs but they can also do collection drives. So um, we've had uh, the Liberty Baseball Club collected all kinds of things for Giving Tuesday, pillows and sheets and uh, shower curtains. Happy fans. Each, each age group did a drive for, for the items that we need, and they ended up collecting over 2,000 items. Um, so that was really wonderful. And sometimes it means that your grandchild goes to their bedroom, picks out five toys and books that they don't use anymore that they're ready to part with and they donate those and um, it's, it's really something that's special because a lot of times, at least with my daughter, she won, she's turning 16 and she just now donated her childhood books and toys, but she was able to do it and let go of those things because she knew that they were going to uh, another child in the community who doesn't have those. Um, so that's, that's something that's always really awesome and wonderful. And here we just have a video of some little guys getting surprised they weren't home when their furniture was completed. Where are you going? The mom took this on her phone, so the uh, quality is not very good, but um, we get the feel. <laughs> Those, those kids were so, I wasn't even there. 
absolutely were not going to not be a part of bringing the beds in. And they were so little and so cute. Um, I'm so excited. And again, this is this is like a pretty very common experience for us that the, the little ones are excited and want to lend a hand. Um, I mean, even younger than kindergarten, we have to kind of say, no, we're at the mattress. You get to carry the teddy bear inside. <laughs> Um, does anyone have any questions? Oh, I just want to read this last thing. So, oh, sorry. That's okay. okay. Our mission from, from the day we started is to create community and create a stronger community. Um, so our work, as Selena said, has been able to connect people from all over our community, our donors, volunteers, our recipients, and our staff. And now, if you have any questions. Did we answer everything? It just goes around and around, doesn't it? I have one thing about Squawker's textile. I know I, I can't walk much on YouTube the terrible things about textiles, but what do you mean with textiles? People who walk, did you say some things? So what we do with, the, with all of the linens and soft things, right. we, we put them in a, a holding area for the dog. So once the bed bug dog has come through, we know that there's no bed bugs and no mold. And then we go through, and a lot of people have donated things and washed them. So we can tell that they've been washed and dried. And so then we move them over to be sorted and put into this so bag. You can take them, wash them, and dry them, and send them back. That, that's an option. So then there are a lot of things that maybe smell like an old closet or just yeah. don't. <laughs> yeah, or the attic, and so those things, we, we do have laundry there, it's just very slow, and so, you know, that's an option. I, it's not the only one, but um, that would be something um, that would just help us keep keep things moving. Yeah, right. This is wonderful, congratulations. Thank you. organizations in Iowa who provide a service similar to this. Um, in Des Moines, there's the free store, and that has actually existed for almost two decades. Um, and they work a little bit differently than we do. They don't deliver, and they work um, directly through their domestic violence shelters. So um, they coordinate all of their giving through those shelters, and the shelters provide the transportation, and they do have a little bit more of a shopping experience. Um, that's entirely volunteer run. However, the wonderful man who started that organization is getting close to 90. He started it when he, he retired, and he's a little bit worried about when he can't do it anymore, if it will be able to continue on, um, especially the way that it's, it has functioned. And then that's also um, tied to a church. So all of their storage space and everything is um, located within a church. Um, and then Cedar Rapids has Central Furniture Rescue. And they're about a year and a half younger than us. And um, their system is a little bit similar and, and a bit different in some ways, but we all work together. We form an Iowa Furniture Coalition. And so we meet monthly and share ideas and um, are actively looking at other parts of the, the state who have needs. Um, we have people reach out from all over asking us for help, and it's, it's so hard to say, I'm sorry, we can't come to Burlington. I, you know, someone's house burned down and we have no resources and they've heard about us, but um, we we just, we simply can't do it. So our goal is to kind of create a template and then to be able to offer assistance to other folks um, and communities who want to set up something similarly. One day it would be great to be able to expand houses and homes into other communities because um, the way that we do the work has really removed all barriers. Um, we worked really hard to make sure that we can provide our service in a way that's entirely barrier free to the people in need. Um, that's a very, very critical part of, of what we do and um, that's not exactly how the other two organizations work. And again, they do wonderful, wonderful work and we've learned from them. Um, but we first need to sustain the Iowa City's Community School District of Brody, Johnson County's rural needs and then we'll look at maybe trying to, to see where this could be helpful in other areas. I'm from Cedar Falls. Um, and I attended the lab school there. So my teachers and a lot of my friends and, and networking family are in that area and, and they're constantly asking me to start something similar there. And so maybe in five to 10 years, but they, they know the need is there. Um, so it's, 
we've got two others in Iowa. And there, there are um, similar, similar um, organizations in other states, um, and it, just everyone does things a little bit differently. Um, a, a lot of the organizations require like a live video recording when um, the people come home and then they share that to social media or the television show, and we don't, we would never require something like that for folks to, to access our service. That's something that we really disagree um, so, out of state, we see a lot of that, um, not at all in Iowa, but the short answer is two others, and um, we, we do have this coalition to provide guidance to, to folks who want to start and are looking at expanding services. Thank you very much. I, I just want to add to that, that we have found that it is a huge job, and so uh, it's not as simple as go pick up some furniture and drop it off. Um, so we're, hopefully we can share this because starting from scratch was a lot of work. There are a lot of difficult lessons along the way. Are you sure. still volunteering at this thing? At this? What's that? Are you still volunteering at this? So Lucy is volunteering. We created one staff position, which is oh, my, my position now, and that was simply for sustainability. Um, I was working full time in my job. Okay. It was like 50 to 60 hours a week and then doing this full time too. And we were advised and then realized that there was not at least one role that could be paid mm -hmm. that if I had to quit doing it or Lucy had to quit doing it, that it would just go away. Mm -hmm. um, but doing it, it entirely as volunteers is pretty sure. impossible. Yeah. But yeah, yes. I mean, and really what we want is for this to, to be able to be a long standing mm -hmm. organization. Um, the things that we've heard from all of our referring agencies and social workers and city staff and county workers was that sort of many attempts at versions of this mm -hmm. had occurred in the past and then they would always disappear because there was no standalone agency that mm -hmm. just existed to provide this. So it needs to be something that's stable, um, sustainable, and always present. Um, so that's where we're headed. <laughs> So we could drop some 